Yeah, I need to believe in my detective work. This whole setup would have had to have been prepared in the gym well beforehand. Knowing that narrows the list of suspects. <sighs> hey, Kurumi. You've been... Awfully complacent these past few minutes. Care to explain yourself? It has to be you. There's one more thing I still have to confirm. But Kirumi is the prime suspect. Me? What? K Kirumi? So Kirumi is the culprit! Doing set up in the gym, person of high intelligence. I suspected Angie at first, I'm not going to lie because of a few things she said earlier, but during the later part of the trial, she started actually being very um cooperative. Whereas Kurumi I noticed you haven't been saying a damn thing. And then thinking back on it, there were a few things you said earlier which were a little... weird. That is not yet a certainty. Let us hear her testimony first. Is this true, Kirumi? I cannot believe you would suspect me. If that is the case, then I will have to deny it. I will not let you make the wrong choice. The wrong choice? If you do believe it is me, are you prepared to stand by that decision? I will refute your accusations with all my might, for everyone's sake. <sighs> I, of course, am not the culprit. The crime was committed at night time. And you have no alibi, do you? An alibi for nighttime? I believe most of us do not have one. I have evidence that proves you're the culprit. Do you think we would fall for such nonsense? The trick relied on complex mechanisms to work. Let me just check something. Shuichi, Hibo, Kyo, and Tenko were forced to gather the ultimate entomology slabs 8pm to 11pm. Five minutes to 9 p.m. Himiko and Anji joined as well. Kukichi in the ultimate entomologist lab at 9 p.m. He was with Kurumi from 9 to 10. By 11 p.m. he returned to the lab. Ten p.m.'s night time, if I remember correctly. She has an alibi from 9 to 10, but not when actual night time starts. Someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. Preposterous. That could have been done by anyone. Kurumi is thin and has a nice body. She and Ryoma could have totally shared an inner tube. We all could have, except perhaps Gonta. To force Kurumi to implicate herself, my logic has to be airtight. I knew she wasn't going to last the entirety of this story, she was just too damn... ...coincidental in her... What am I trying to say? The type of character she is, I looked at her and went, Man, you're either going to get axed off, or you're going to do it. I'm sure about this. <sighs> Let's do it. I, of course, am not the culprit. The crime was committed okay, at one. You have no How many power. statements have we got? We got... I don't think that's evidence. correct. You're the culprit. Do you think we would fall for such nonsense? The trick relied on complex mechanisms to work. But someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. Preposterous. That could have been done by anyone. No, it couldn't have. Because of the alibis. No. The only 
person who could have prepared this murder is Kurumi. Well, the preparations in the gym, in any case. And why do you believe that? Before the culprit could put the body into the tank, several steps needed to be taken. Like tying the rope to the gym window and putting a partition in the piranha tank. That's right. Ryoma's body entered the gym from the window, but that required preparation. That could only have been done when Kirumi was by herself in the gym before nighttime. But Kirumi was alone in the gym for only, like, five minutes. Not enough time for the whole murder, but enough time to set it up. Enough time to tie the rope on the window frame and put the pain in the piranha tank. This is my selfless devotion! Here we go. While I do understand where you are coming from, I assure you this is just... a part of your petty imagination. An empty theory created from nihilism. You know, you arguing against me is only making my points stronger. If it were solely the rope and partition, I suppose five minutes might be enough time. I accept that. However, the crux of your argument is not but a guess. You continue to force the facts to conform to your misguided narrative. When you consider that the crux of your argument is faulty, your entire case falls apart. No, it doesn't. What do you mean by crux of the argument? How is it just a guess? I am referring to the rope. Now, with that rope, it is possible to reach the gym window from the third floor window. But there is no evidence to indicate this had happened. That's not right. I have evidence. The abrasions left on the window frames at the gym in the lab. Were those scratches from when the rope was tied to the window frame? Just tying the rope to the frame wouldn't cause so much damage. The rope that was tied to the frames must have been weighed down significantly. And if it was a cable, that definitely would have left more of an impression. Even a rope would have left at least a bit of an impression. The frames didn't break, but they were left with distinct marks. Those scratches are proof that you used a rope to carry the body to the windowsill. Oh? What's wrong, Kirumi? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Hey, what's wrong? Hey, 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 hey! Is Kirumi quiet because that's what happened? Please answer us, Kirumi! Shuichi is doing this for your sake! If it is for my sake, then it would be much easier to forfeit. But I cannot allow that! Because I must do this for everyone! For everyone? I have a duty and a responsibility. I must serve everyone and protect them. So I refuse to surrender! They won't forgive me if I do! What? Where is this coming from? Her response seems genuine. So, what did she mean by everyone? Is she doing this for all our sakes? Am I... Am I wrong? Is Turumi innocent? No, I... I'm wrong again. Hey, Kirumi. Who exactly is this everyone you're talking about? Uh, Kaito? I've... Just got a weird feeling about this. When you said everyone, it felt like you weren't talking about us. It felt like you were talking about someone who isn't here. Someone who isn't here? Someone outside of the academy? Hey, do you think Kirumi saw her own motive video? Hmm? Huh? The motive video? You saw your important someone in danger, so you committed murder, right? Is that true? I am so sorry, 
sorry for making such a mess. Because of that, I made all of you assume something unnecessary. Unnecessary? You saying I'm wrong? This everyone you're talking about. It is all of you, of course. I don't buy that for a second. Really? Do you swear to a tour? Yes, really. So please believe me. I am not the culprit. I do not care what becomes of me, but I will not allow any of you to die. Because I made a promise to Kaede. She wished for all of us to escape together. Don't you bring her into this. If you don't mean it. I want to fulfill my duties as the ultimate maid. I wish to serve everyone. So please believe me. You have to! Kirumi! Um, are we totally sure Kirumi's the culprit? Maybe it's someone else! Are we sure Kokichi isn't the culprit? <laughs> How rude. But Gota just can't believe Kirumi would kill Ryuma. Kirumi's breakfasts were the best. She always treated us so well. Yeah, and it's that mentality that makes it so easy to man manipulate us because we relied on her too much. She really is like a mom. Perhaps it was after she gained our trust that she saw her chance to strike. I'm with Korakio on that one. You really are screwed up. Screwed up from head to toe. Even through your clothes, I can tell. Shuichi, please reconsider suspecting me as the culprit. You only suspect me because I was at the gym during nighttime yesterday, correct? But you cannot accuse me of being the culprit with that insufficient proof. It is still possible for Maki and Kaito to have gone to the gym. They do not have alibis. They could have pretended to help Himiko, but secretly prepared the murder. When you put it that way, it does seem possible. We can't accuse Kirumi just based on our alibis! Guys, maybe suspecting Kirumi is wrong. Shit, she's getting what she wants. Yeah, maybe we should think it over one more time. I... made a promise. As the ultimate detective, I made a promise to seek the truth. I made a promise to Kaede, so I'm not turning back now. Damn right, Shuichi. They're scared. They're scared that they have to accuse one of their friends of murder. So it's up to me. I have to do it. I'll use my detective work to prove it. So you still believe I am the culprit? But there is no evidence to indicate that I am- No, there is. I have proof that you're the culprit. I realized it when we determined that the rope weight was used to move the body. If it was indeed Hirumi who moved the body with the makeshift ropeway, then the final clue falls into place. You're talking about the fabric, aren't you? The final clue? The damning evidence that proves Hirumi is the culprit. Shuichi, won't you please tell me why you are so desperate to pin me as the culprit? Don't you want to protect everyone? I do, and that's precisely what I'm doing. I'm doing this because I want to protect everyone. Switch. Then you're wrong! Your deduction is all wrong! Your words aren't going to convince me now. Not when I know the truth. All you care about is your own reasoning. You don't even listen to others. I bet everyone's lives on a deduction made by a self-righteous brat! You can't save anyone! No more doubts, I'm confident I'm right. I'm going to present everyone the evidence that proves she's guilty. 
You know, Kurumi, I hung out with you a few times. Whether it was with Kaidi, whether it was with Shuichi, I thought you were pretty cool. Wanted to learn some more about you, but... Well... I guess I just won't have that opportunity anymore. I am truly sorry. This is it! The piece of black fabric in the pool. That's the final clue that proves you're guilty. It's been bothering me for a while. I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was just trash at first, but I couldn't dismiss it entirely. Now that the class trial has come this far, I know for certain. It's an important piece of the puzzle. Because like the inner tube, it's evidence the culprit couldn't dispose of. Huh? Why not? Using the ropeway, you could slide the inner tube from the lab to the gym. But how would you control it? If it kept sliding and hit the window, the momentum would have thrown the body off. To prevent that from happening, the culprit needed some way to adjust the speed. For example, the culprit could have used their hands for friction. Yeah, so what? You're still wrong! Your logic is flawed! Hmm. Why are you becoming increasingly erratic? <laughs> there is such absolute beauty in trying to fight against the truth. What truth? That black cloth is just trash. You can't prove I'm the culprit with just that. No, it's not just trash. It's proof that you're the culprit. <laughs> Finding out how that black fabric fits into this is the key to everything. I'll make it all clear now. Man, that's a cool picture. What is this truth? Oh man, oh god, it's been a while since I've had to do this. Okay, there we go. You are incorrect. What is this truth? I don't remember hold notes. That is okay. Your empty deduction. You continue to confuse everyone. One, two, three, four. You are incorrect. Okay, okay. What is this truth? Okay, I figured all this now. I'm back in the swing of it. Shit. Deduction. Not quite. In this class trial. Everyone's life is at stake! I know that! Self-righteous truth! Everyone might die! Yeah. In this class trial! Everyone's life is at stake! One, two, three. Self-righteous truth! One, two... Okay, okay, okay. I understand your reasoning. But I will never... Oh, that one was a hole, god damn! You wish to pin me as the culprit. You do not have any evidence. No, 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 no. You are only providing us with speculation. You only wish to protect everyone. Why must you interfere? I completely understand your reason. But I will never accept it. It seems you wish to pin Oh my me god, as the she's actually you do not interfering now. You are only providing us with speculation. Final blow. What does that piece of trash prove? Here, root me's gloves. It ends here. Is where it came from. The piece of fabric came from Kirumi's black glove. <laughs> Kirumi's glove? 
If the culprit were slowing their descent by grabbing the rope with their hands, there would have been a lot of friction, easily enough to cause rope burn. But our culprit was smart. They weren't burned because they weren't barehanded. Yeah, the culprit had gloves on. One got all torn up from the friction and... and it fell into pool? From what I remember, the only one who wears black gloves is Kirumi, right? The gloves on your hands now. I take it they're from your dorm? The extra uniforms in our rooms are made of the same material we're wearing now. We can test my theory by comparing the fabric scrap with your glove. Well, Kirumi? Will you allow us to compare the black fabric we found in the pool with your gloves? Huh? What's the matter? Why are you sweating so much? Kirumi, what's wrong? In the end, I'm just like them. I'm scared of revealing the truth. Because it means that someone will has to be sacrificed. But Kaidi was scared too. She didn't let that stop her. She fought things through to the end. I faced the truth, I damned and doubted it. And kept thinking, and kept going. This is where it led me, and I won't turn away from it. I will show you the truth. Let's finish this, Shuichi. Right here. Right now. And with this final piece, the deed is done. This is the truth of the case! The victim's body was found this morning during Himiko's underwater escape act. When we saw the piranhas in the tank, we thought that Himiko's escape failed. Of course, it was all part of the act. Himiko's escape went perfectly. But when Angie opened the curtain in front of the tank, we saw Ryoma with piranha swarming around him. Before any of us could react, the piranhas devoured Ryoma's body. And all that was left were his bones and the handcuffs he was wearing. That horrifying sight was the finishing touch on the culprit's own twisted magic trick. The culprit obfuscated the time and place of the murder, implicating Himiko in the process. In truth, the crime began last night, around 8.55 p.m. While preparing for the show in the gym, the culprit had a chance to be alone. It was then that the culprit used the ladder to reach the piranha tank and removed the glass lid to put inside the tank. They used it as a partition to force the piranhas to one side of the tank. Next, the culprit took the rope from the stage wing in the gym. And used the ladder once more, this time to climb up to the gym's window. Once there, they opened the window and tied one end of the rope to the window frame. The rope was then thrown out the window toward the pool.
These preparations were key for the culprit's elaborate plan. At nighttime, past midnight, the culprit asked Ryoma to meet at his lab. All the pieces were in place. The culprit was ready to murder. First, the culprit knocked Ryoma out, probably striking him from behind. Then, they put the handcuffs from the shower room on Ryoma's wrists. shoved his head into the sink filled with water. From the water and the pain of drowning, Ryoma should have woken up and struggled. The culprit anticipated his resistance, which is why Ryoma was handcuffed. The struggle left scrapes on the cuffs and sink, but in the end, Ryoma succumbed. Ryoma was dead, but the culprit's plan had only just begun. They removed the cable from the tennis net and hung it from the window facing the pool. And then, at the pool, they connected the wire and the rope from the gym window. They returned to the lab after picking up one last thing. The rubber inner tube that was in the pool's tool shed. Once back in the lab, the culprit pulled the cable, bringing up the rope. They pulled until the rope was taut, then tied it to the lab's window frame. And thus, the gym and the lab windows were connected by a single rope. After making a hanger of sorts with another length of rope tied to the inner tube, they hung the inner tube on the rope connecting the windows. That's how the culprit created the ropeway that was used to move the body. An impressive premeditated murder, but the culprit made two crucial mistakes. The culprit got on the inner tube with Ryoma's body and slid toward the gym. With the height difference between the windows, they would have built up quite some speed. To avoid crashing through the window, the culprit used a brake. They used their own hand to grip the rope and slow down. That would have caused significant rope burn had the culprit not been wearing gloves. But due to the friction, part of a glove tore off and dropped in the pool. Regardless, the culprit reached the window and put Ryoma's body into the piranha tank. The glass pane not only kept the piranhas and the body separated, it also kept the piranhas so close together, they concealed the body. After that, all the culprit had to do was untie the rope and the inner tube. But that's when they made their second mistake.
one end of the rope came loose, and the inner tube dropped into the pool. Thus, the culprit was forced to leave two key pieces of evidence, the fabric and the inner tube. They couldn't retrieve the evidence because of the rule against swimming at nighttime. And that's the whole story. Am I wrong, Kirumi Tojo? The ultimate maid? Kirumi. That's the conclusion I reached. Do you have any objections? This is very, very unfortunate, Shuichi. My pride as a maid demands that I fulfill every request that I receive. But to end like this... Does that mean you admit it? Kirumi... Why use your own gloves, though? The warehouse should have had plenty. There weren't any. Obviously, she would have used them if they were available. Jeez, Monokuma provided everything but the gloves. That's pretty sadistic. But thanks to him, at least the game became way more interesting. So, it's decided. This case was decided the moment someone, who shall not be named, opened their big mouth. But we, we don't know that. Maybe the real culprit is someone nobody expects. That is right. No need to worry. Oh, Monodem. You're like a mommy taking care of her sick child. All right! Let's go! The heart-racing excitement as the blackened and the spotless finally face off! It's voting time! <sighs> didn't want it to come to this. Really didn't. Searching for the truth is always hard. You gotta do it. No matter how hard it may be. Now then, it seems the voting has finished. Let's see the result. She even tried right at the end. Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? Well, that's all she wrote. <sighs> Every time we get to chapter two of one of these games, one of my favorites always gets off in some way, shape, or form. This game was no different. Except this game had the balls to also do it to one of the first characters. I won't let her down.